Okay, so let's take a look at our week two assignment three assignment here for us uh, doing a formal symmetri symmetrical design or a radially symmetrical design or a crystallographic symmetry design. And we have three uh, basic uh, templates to work from. I'm going to work from the square one here uh, because I'm going to try to do a radial design. Uh, now you can obviously choose whichever one works for you. Um, but I think that by doing a radial design such as this one, or I, ideally I would do this one, but I don't really want to spend uh, an hour or so recording myself doing this. I'm going to try to do it quickly just to give you some basic ideas. Um, but you'll, you'll be able to apply the same uh, uh, process to either of those, uh, or even if you wanted to do something like this, because if you look carefully, this has sort of a radial... Uh, aspect to each of the cells in this crystallographic symmetry. And of course they all have bilateral or formal symmetry to them as well. Um, I think what you'll find though is it's easier or more fun perhaps to create crystallographic symmetry or radial symmetry because you can start with a really simple idea and build upon it and then start repeating it and then filling in. Like if you sort, sort of dissect this design you realize it's got really some very simple ideas here. It's really just rectangles that they probably went in with uh, the uh, various tools and uh, Pathfinder if they worked in Illustrator or uh, you know the intersecting shapes in uh, Photoshop to make this one shape and then repeat it four times or three more times to create four and then they just moved them over and created a grid and then maybe they added that dot after the fact. Uh, you know, this one here, it's a little harder to dissect here. I'm going to make this a little bigger. If I hit Command-0 on the back, Control-0 on, on Windows, you make it a little bigger there. Uh, you know, it's really just simple shapes. It's a nice, carefully designed and organized design. And you'll see also I added uh, a grid there to help, uh, some guidelines to help you see how to work with it and how to break it apart a little bit. And we're going to do that, and also you can see that with this one as well. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, that makes it a little easier to understand. Now actually you'll notice with this one, strictly speaking, this would not be radial symmetry. Why is that? Well, yeah, I can see these four main shapes are the same, and if I divide it into fourths, they're, they're radial. However, strictly speaking, each side or each quadrant, rather, I should say, is not exactly the same. Why? Well, this has got three dots in it. Yeah, this has got three dots in it. But wait, this one's got three dots over here. This one are four dots over here, but doesn't have those three dots there. And this one has four dots there, but not three there. <clears throat> so in fact, and also in the center, you'll see that there's a dot here and a dot here, but it's not the same if I were to divide it into fourths, right? So technically speaking, this would be considered regular formal symmetry or bilateral symmetry. Uh, you know, I think you'll find in the lectures that they are a little less strict with the interpretation. They might consider this as radial symmetry. I'm a little more formal and strict about it. <laughs> to me, this is just formal symmetry. But again, one is not superior to the other. It's just they're just different uh, ways of looking at symmetry. So enough of that. Let's go on to trying to make something. So the first thing I want to do is hide this text layer, right? Get rid of that, and make sure I'm in in between my mask and my background. I'll create a new layer. Hit my new layer button right here, and that's where I'm going to be working. I make sure that's selected, and I think I'm going to start uh, instead of working with my shape tools, which is an easy enough thing to do. I'm going to start by just doing some drawing with the paintbrush. But first, what I want to do is make my guidelines, and you see, all I need to do is click on the ruler and drag out and it's going to snap right in the middle it's going to want to stop right right where it should right at 300 pixels or 320 or something because that's this is what six something so that and I'm going to do that here and if you don't see your rulers hit the R button oops wrong one the, sorry hit the command R button or control R and let's see now there they go there they come back and you'll see it's actually view show uh, somewhere in here, rulers. Oh, wait, rulers, right there. It's uh, Command R or Control R, I think. Uh, whoops, let's make them come back. And then it's easy enough to just grab and oop, snap. And you want to make sure your snap is turned down also. Snap, right there. And then it'll say snap to guides, grid, layers, everything. That just makes things easier. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do, instead of designing the whole thing, I'm going to think about designing one-fourth of it. It's a lot easier. And I'm going to overlap a little bit. That way I'm just going to, when I finish one quadrant, all I need to do is select that, make sure all those layers are there, and then copy it and rotate it over and fill in the other three. So really I only have to do one-fourth of my design. And if I want to make my design not four-way, but like this other one here, this is not four. You'll notice it's eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one thing that's important to know about radial design, it doesn't work if you do like eight and then five around that. And, you know, they have to be kind of the same number. And usually four or eight is a good way to go. Now, of course, on the outside, it's 16, right? If I start here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, because every other one, right? So back to here. So what I can do also is I can actually just draw an imaginary line through this way. Now, you can't make an angled ruler, but what you can do is make a line. I'll go to my shape tool, I'll create my line tool. Now it should do it. Let's try it again. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to have that in the background. You know, in fact, I'm going to I'm going to pull it down here and I'm going to lock it by clicking on uh, where's my lock button? Oh, right there. <laughs> lock. Okay. Sometimes these icons get a little hard for me to see. I knew it was there somewhere. Okay, so now I won't accidentally mess that one up. So now, really, all I need to do is design here. So let's just have fun. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm just going to make some shapes. Uh, you know, let's. And I'm not going to get too crazy though. I want to. I want to keep my shapes kind of consistent, right? Uh, oh, I can't even make a turn. There we go. I'll fill it with black, stroke, none. Okay. Now, uh, click the Move tool. And I'm just going to see what happens if I do something like this. And now I'm going to make another one. This one I'm going to fill with white. Oops. Unfortunately, sometimes this gets a little confusing. I'll have to undo that. Uh, I have to click on my on a new layer. Otherwise, it just keeps drawing on top of it. I want it to be back down here. Now, I'm going to make a new layer. This time, I think I will try doing this. Okay, fill black. Stroke none. And let's just move that up to there. And then let's, for graphs, I just, I'm going to move this one like that. I just hit, I held down my Alter Option key while I clicked on this layer, and that pulled it out into a new layer. And then I'm going to do one more, hold Alt Option. With this one, I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. With Command T. And that brings up the transform. And I'll hit shift. Hold shift down. And I'm actually going to do shift option. What does that do? Oh, it does it, does it from the center. I like that. Maybe I'll bring that in a little bit more. Okay, so, you know, I'll, maybe I'll fill some more stuff in there. Uh, let's, I'm just going to pause it. I'm going to run in. Well, maybe I'll do one more with you watching. I'll switch to white. Click on that. Oops. It's the same. See, again, it's selecting that one. I need a new layer. Now, I want to change my stroke to nothing, but fill to white. White, whoops. And let's make one. And let's just move it. Uh, this time I'm going to hit Command T, and I'm going to turn it a little bit. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit. Maybe I'll move it there. What does that do? Oh, I kind of like that. Oops. Anti again. 
a little bit hard to see. Yeah, I can also change the degrees here, but I'm going to guess that that's okay. That's not too bad. There. Now, I'm going to do another one. Alt. Hold down the Alt key. And I'll pull out another one. Now I'm going to hit the Command T, Transform. And I'm going to shrink it down, holding the Shift key. Oops. Do this. Alt key to make it in the center. You know, I'm just playing around here. I don't really have any clear idea what this is going to look like. It may look great. It may look terrible. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, maybe one more of these little... I'm going to do a little bit more here. I'm just copying, but I'm going to pause it so you don't have to watch me go through everything. And you'll see that I, I started off being kind of symmetrical, and I decided, you know, symmetrical this way. If I were to divide my shape down the middle, I would have this side and this side be more or less equal. And I, I realized that... It's going to be more interesting if I don't do that, okay? So let's see what happens here. Okay, now what I want to do before I get too out of control here is I've got all these different layers here, and it's getting a little out of control. So uh, this is, of course, just my, my little uh, line there. What I need to do is select this one and go all the way up, select this one, shift select. That means I've selected all of them, and I'm going to drag them into a new group. You'll see that, that folder there, not the new layer, this is create a new group. You can also do that by Command G. <clears throat> and now, if I do that, okay. Now, actually, I need to select them all because I also want to link them. Shift select, and now I hit the link button right here. Link layers. Now they're linked. And the, the nice thing about that is, first of all, I can hide it so I don't have to look at them all. They're all right there under Group One. The other thing is, if I grab one and move it, they all move. And I Oops, I undo that, Command-Z. Uh, but you need to have auto-select layer on for that to work. That's a very important thing to be aware of. Sometimes that can be annoying and you have to turn it off, but most of the time it's good to have that on. Okay, so now I have them all together here. Now here's where another thing where it gets a little tricky. Um, if I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm actually going to have to rasterize this layer. So what I'm going to do is just make a, I'm going to make a duplicate click on this and I'm going to make new layer. So now I should have the exact same group copied. Okay. Now this group, what I want to do is I actually want to make all of them into one. Now I can also do that as a smart object as I've seen others do, but I think instead I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say merge selected. I don't know if that'll allow me to do it that way. Let's see. Layer merge. I don't want to, uh, let's try merge shapes. Nope, that doesn't work because it makes them do the opposite. It doesn't, see, when you merge shapes, it doesn't know the difference between white and black. It sees them all as just shapes and it makes one shape out of all of them. So that doesn't work. Uh, instead, I'm going to uh, do, 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 convert to smart object. Let's try that. Okay, now it's just one shape. That's what I wanted. Okay, and it's still in that group, which I don't really need it, but. In fact, I'm going to turn off my original one. I'm just keeping that in case I screw up. It's always important to do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm selecting that smart object. I'm going to go to my selection tool. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to my, this selection tool, the polygonal selection tool, and I'm going to click here. I'm going to click there. I'm going to click... Uh, I'm going to go all the way out to here, actually. I'll explain why in a minute. And then there. You see that little zero shape right there? That means it's going to connect. Okay, now I'm going to hit Command C, which is copy, and Command V, which is paste. And look, it just created a new layer and it stupidly offset it, which I didn't want it to do. Let's put it back where it needs to be. Okay, there. I lined it up again. Oops. Oh, come on. I can't it line up nicely. I'm actually going to hide my original layer. Ah, that's what I want, okay? But now these two are hidden. I'm not looking at those. I'm just looking at the one I selected. Now, I'm going to make a, yet another layer. I can also do it by just doing this new layer. And now, I'm going to uh, hit my Command T. I'm going to do this again. Put it down. Oh, let's see. I want to make it all the way in the... I don't want it there. I want it there, because I'm going to use that... Uh, I don't know if I can... Uh, 